This is how the week began. My daughter sent me this wonderful image of Gibraltar and then to the left you will see Morocco. This is what the Med is all about during the winter. This is the very much photographed vista from Estepona itself. A gorgeous day, a sunny day. It wouldn't stay that way. <laughs> But what a way to start off a weekly recap with this money shot. From the pristine beauty of the coast, looking over the pillars of Hercules, we are going to move into the messy confines of the patio. It rained, yes it did, which meant that all the pots that were outside were getting flooded. So I took the orchids out of the mask and of course you discover some murky water and there was a lot of cleaning being done, which I'm not going to show you. But we can move on and see the beautiful buds forming on my cymbidium. Of course, with the rain and the cold, I always question whether they're going to be a nice blooming or if we're going to get botrytis. But either way, this orchid should have been dealt with in 2023. Clean up, repot, but cymbidiums and lecca. Yeah, it's not exactly a project I'm looking forward to, but uh, 2024 <laughs> is going to have to be done because since this footage was taken, the pot has broken. I don't have a rim anymore. Never mind how heavy it is. <laughs> Inspecting the next pot along the row is my bias and I'm just double checking on the spikes because thankfully they're still doing well. They are way premature. They appeared far too early for my liking back in early December of 2023 because our fall was so mild. Well, they're now developing during a time of year where the temperatures are not fire friendly as you can see by the curling of the leaves. C'est la vie comme mi fios, unfortunately. But if she blooms, at at least we get those beautiful blooms. The season and the temperature etc is very conducive for my Blatia bowl. I've already got 10 new growths that I can see peeking out. So we're hopefully going to have a nice little bowl of goodness coming up. Hopefully a nice blooming as well. I had the Alba Striata bloom and the Striata bloom for the first time in 2023 so I'm looking forward to seeing what this bowl is going to do next. This was Stan the man status quo <laughs> for most of the week because he is growing new leaves and with the cold temperatures and maybe cold wind, oh, I don't want to compromise the cell structure of the purdy purdy leaves. So he is under a towel for most of the time when the sun comes out a little bit. Yeah, I'll, I'll remove the towel. Meanwhile, he does still need to get watered, but a little less. However, yeah, this is my Stan the man for the time being. <laughs> So let's leave the east side then and well there was Baloo I was trying to get him out of the way when I called his name you can see he's turning his head and then of course just because I called his name I've got King running out at the same time. <laughs> King is very jealous. A quick check on the Maxillaria tenofolia. Everything is looking lush and beautiful there. And then as we move along, I have to inspect my Colmenara Masai Red just to make sure that we do get some blooms eventually. The spikes are looking gorgeous and in my opinion are far too premature. Usually the buds come out at the end of March. Here we are in the middle of January. So I'm a little concerned about these blooms as well. Meanwhile, they look pretty when they've got the rain on them. That's not exactly what you grow in orchid for for 11 months to then have blooms with rainwater on them and have them compromised. But so far so good and I hope it stays that way. To the right of my Colmenara Masai Red, I've got my curtain project, Dendrobium Ophyllum Keikis. You can see a very, very snazzy towel. Well, we'll get to that. But here they are, my ugly little ducklings up there for the time being. There is nothing beautiful about them, but they're holding on and it's typical for this time of year for them to look like dead sticks. It's not pretty at all. I'm looking forward to seeing what they are going to do growth-wise. If there is a growth spurt from the older Keikis, if we're gonna get some long canes so that my visual of this curtain with the beautiful of film blooms eventually does become reality. And Ceratolamium on the bottom is holding on, it's doing well. I still have to treat for thrips. There always seems to be something wanting to attack fresh growth. Hopefully nothing untoward is going to happen to that orchid. I need that cane to really progress very well, seeing as it's the only one that's really producing any form of a root system at the bottom of the orchid herself. 
This is the beautiful vista of my Brassavola flagellaris, the status quo at the moment. It's too cold. This mount is so heavy and it took some effort to actually get it positioned to where it is now and not have it fall off. The thought of actually taking it off of how I fixed it up there and then moving it in and out for four to five months, yeah, I couldn't get myself to do that. So I'm experimenting with a towel, hopefully to protect the orchid from the cold. And on warmer days, I do take the towel off and I do have to water the orchid etc. Fingers crossed that this works because I really don't want to lose this orchid. It's just this mount is heavy. But moving along the patio, having a look at the Dendrobium berry odor, which in my opinion in 2024 is going to get a complete reset. Yes, she's producing blooms, but she is a fraction of what she was before I divided her. So I have a feeling that all these cakeys now is a sign for me to understand the mother plant is pretty much done. She doesn't have that beautiful appearance anymore. There's no real lushness about her. So what we're going to do in 2024 is remove all the cakeys and I'm going to start myself a new berry odor and then see if the mother plant recovers or not. But in this case, berry odors really shouldn't be producing that many keikis, especially if they are established. One or two is fine, but I have now in 2023 had eight or nine keikis form from this orchid alone. And to me, that is a signal the mother plant is pretty much done. This is Holcoglossum Camillianum, <laughs> my favorite non-blooming orchid of all time. <laughs> growing roots into the hedge. What else can I say? It's a beast of an orchid, but it doesn't bloom for me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I know it sounds strange, but I don't care. I really don't. I love this orchid so much that, okay, it would be nice to have blooms, but you look at this. You, you just can't look past it and say this is amazing. So she's absolutely fine. Who is not fine and is a bit grumpy and disgruntled is my cousin It. He is not having a good time this year. I think I didn't fertilize him enough. I think I didn't give him enough calcium because all the new growths, all the leaves that you see that are burnt and browning and the cell structure is declining, all of that is new growth. And for me, that is a sign that I didn't give this orchid enough calcium and it cannot sustain the temperatures it would normally be able to handle because it's not been that cold. Yes, we've had some weird drafts that were a bit chilly, which is typical for this time of year, but it doesn't make much sense to me that he is burning like that at the tips. For an orchid like this, this is not over fertilizing. This is under fertilizing. So sorry, cousin it, but you're not looking your finest. Uh, my bad, mea culpa. Arinco stylus gigantea crossed with Van der Cerula. Yep, she lives outside. These two parents normally would object to the cold, but I have never brought her inside, seeing as she's always been a rescue orchid. But it seems like she's doing quite okay in all the years that she's lived outside, so I just keep doing it. And now she has a nice white pot. Maybe, just maybe, we will get some blooms from her in 2024. And this is my west side rack. What a shame on days like these. Everything is covered up and everything is protected. I have the Ancelia Africanas behind this curtain because, yeah, I don't bring them inside either. I'm really pushing my luck with the orchids I'm leaving outside when temperatures drop into single digits. So it's always been my hope that the curtain will protect them a little bit but they're not protected from what is coming from above. So even their pots got flooded. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was a race to get them unflooded, but they're okay. And we do have a spike again from a buffalo crossed with Leo. So we're gonna have some blooms if I get things right and nothing untoward happens to that single spike. I see some appearances of something happening at the end of other canes, but yeah, I'm not hopeful. We, at least we've got one. It's a clear visual that there will be some blooms. I just have to make sure I don't mess it up because these orchids go on the top shelf, back down, on the top shelf, back down. And you know how quickly a spike can snap off. But for the time being, proof in the pudding, we have a spike. I just quickly shuffle back to, because, oh goodness, I forgot to show you my Dendrobium aphyllum mother plant. She looks horrible. <laughs> 
<laughs> but because everything else is sprouting early, and you can see the keikis of the class of 2019, they are starting on new growths. Yes, that's how mild the fall was all the way up to mid-December. It was insane. And I've got new growths starting. Sure, they're not going to take off because they're going to adapt depending on the temperatures. But now I'm already looking at the nubbins of my ophyllum, the mother plant, because normally I see nubbins mid-February. Well, if everything else is early, why not start checking right away? <laughs> I'm so desperate. You see, my ophyllum is like the forebearer of spring. When I see nubbins coming, I'm like, oh, here we go. We are turning the corner. But of course, if she starts to produce nubbins round about end of January, then it's not like she's a forebearer. She's just way too early. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's sneak into the blooming alley because it's a little bit chilly out here. There's a draft. There's always a draft in that area. And I just want to show you that my beautiful Dendrobium nafertz Alex Poli is still in gorgeous bloom. The one orchid holding the fort in the blooming alley on the rack that actually defines my blooming alley. There are other blooms I'm going to show you. It's just that, you know, she is in triple A location where I can see her. <laughs> And as we move to the back, you see I've got Harpophila promising to bloom. The sheath is nice and chubby, so we're going to look forward to that and have a little double check on the Dendrobium tortile. Everything is okay over there. And then on that same shelf next to the Harpophila is my Flava. She did not bloom for us in 2023, but has produced several new growths since. And well, it seems like her last growth is now also producing a sheath. And that sheath has a little bit of texture inside of it. So we're looking forward to that. While we're on the subject of Rapiculus Lelias, check this out, Crispy Lavia, she is a first time bloomer. Because of her, 2024 was off to a great start because she opened in the first few days of the new year. Love this orchid and well, pretty, pretty, pretty and not mislabeled, which is always a treat. <laughs> And then this is Baby It, one of the cuttings that I have left in bloom. Who'd have thunk? Isn't that cute though? Just thought I wanted to show that to you because they were propagated in 2023 and there seems to be enough energy for them to bloom, which is awesome. And then we go up. I do still have my Dendrobium Victoria Regina in bloom. They are fading though. I could actually pop all the blooms off now, but I just love this pop of color, especially on dull days like these. And when we swing to the left, on the top shelf of my blooming alley, I have Cattleya Maxima, which is in bud, opening her blooms. These are the palest pink blooms of the Maxima I have ever had. It's the first time I'm leaving her outside for the winter. It's a test, see how she does, as well as all the Purparatas. They are staying outside as well. As far as I can tell, nothing untoward is happening to them. They seem to be holding on. I'm not seeing any signs of cold damage. It's just very disappointing that my Cattleya Maxima did not bloom for us in 2023, but she grew four new growths. And then when she does bloom, she does this. I can't explain it because it's not the lack of light. The blooming alley is always lit with light. I know I say that now <laughs> while we're looking at everything cloudy. But during the months when she was growing her new growths, we're talking bright, bright light and long extended days. Anyway, quel dommage. As long as the orchid is doing fine, that is the most important thing. Underneath, I have an assortment of orchids, my Van der Falcata and the Miltonia Honolulu Binotii from Inns Orchids and ADD. You can see that that pot is doing very, very well. I think there's four new growths in there. And others like Melissa Brianne, they are coming along nicely. We are made a rescue effort on her, so she is at least not declining. Another first-time bloomer, possibly, is my Lelia Mantecere. Look at that. That would be a first-time bloomer. So, fingers crossed. I'm well excited when I see a Rapiculus Lelia coming onto her own in my collection. <laughs> Another orchid that stays outside, also because of certain issues she may or may not have, but look at the size of the pot. I can't schlep these in and out. And she survived the winter of 22 and 23 very, very well outdoors, so I've left her outdoors. It's her second winter outdoors. This is CG Roebling. And then all my little Lelias scattered around, spread them out because high humidity. Yes, they are okay with it, but still in culture things can be a little bit different, especially 
on days when there's not much airflow, like when I was filming this, it was just a very damp day with no breeze at all. So I've spread them out just to increase a little bit of a distance between them and allow some air to get through. I was hopeful because I saw something on my Lelia Cincorana Nina crossed with Bella Vista getting ahead of myself. So I took this picture and I thought, I think there's going to be a bloom coming, but no, it's just a speck of dirt on what is going to be the sheath. <laughs> oh dear, I was getting carried away with seeing my ripiculous lalias coming into sheath and bud, etc. I thought, I can't believe it. Would this be my Nina crossed with Bella Vista also wanting to bloom? Because the orchid herself is pretty, pretty darn big. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Check this out. My cat Leocolna going also is in spike. Another ridiculous Lelia that would be a first time bloomer. <laughs> this is awesome. Anyway, let me show you what it looks like inside in these conditions. Now, I have been very fortunate that this has only been the third day like this. All the other times I was able to bring my orchids outside. But this, well, I don't know about you, but it always makes me so, so sad. <laughs> so we're going to finish off on a very positive note and go back to our beautiful vista of Gibraltar and Morocco, the Pillars of Hercules. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would so appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your time. Thank you so, so much for watching. I wish you a beautiful day as reflected in the image, a beautiful sparkling day on that one condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.